Marks, I guess it's almost unavoidable at this point with uh, the Heisman coming out next week, and you've always been good about being all, all about the team and everything. But as it's gotten closer, have you given it a little bit more thought? And if you do, were happen to have been the winner, what would that mean to you and the university? Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't put a lot of thought into it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm going to wait probably till after this game and, and – Make sure my attention and, and all my focus is on you know this week, um, but yeah, uh, you know it, it's going to be a dream come true. Hopefully, if I'm invited, um, you know that'd be an awesome deal. But again, you know I wouldn't be in this position without my teammates, and um, you know hopefully in the end, whatever the outcome is, um, you know the invitation itself is just an honor and a privilege. Stephen Alexander, front row to your left. You said you said a dream come true. I mean, is it something that you grew up thinking about? I mean, what is it? You know, when you were a little kid, what? How did you grow up thinking about the Heisman and thinking about yourself winning it? That sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, any any young athlete, any young you know football player would, I mean, have dreams and aspirations of of being a part of the ceremony and and maybe even winning it. Um, for me, I you know I grew up watching it. Um, you know, if it was on TV. Uh, the whole family would watch it. You know, it's kind of a cool deal to see, um, you know, really the, the best player in the country get recognized. And, um, you know, just kind of something it's cool to see that, you know, he gets recognized for his his hard work and what he's been able to accomplish. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, I, I really thought it was, a, you know, really dreamt about it. Um, to say that um, I expected myself to be here, it would be a lie. Um, you know, this is all really just surreal, and I'm, I'm very thankful you to be a part of the conversation. Aaron Fentress, to your right. <clears throat> Do you have a favorite Heisman winner? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Anyone you emulated in your backyard or the living room? <laughs> uh, well, I grew up, uh, you know, watching, you know, the Trojans for so many years, and, and Matt Leiner was, um, you know, fun to watch. And what he was able to do uh, with that team, I mean, they played with two really Heisman Trophy winners with Reggie Bush. Um, but, you know, those guys were, were awesome to watch. And, um, you know, to see them win, it was pretty cool. Matt Friend, to your right. How do your teammates handle the discussion? Do they treat it like a pitcher who's pitching a perfect game and just don't even bring it up? Or do they talk to you about what it would be like for you to win it and for the school? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, there hasn't been much conversation about it. Um, you know, I think for me, it's, it's nice because they, they respect that, you know, I'm really just trying to focus on this game. Um, you know, a lot of the guys, I'm sure, will probably start talking about it once this game is done. Um, but at the same time, again, I'm just really focused on this week. And, you know, when they when they do start popping up, um, I'm sure it'll be all out of fun. Chris Peach, front row. Marcus, at the beginning of the season, uh, somebody asked Scott Frost if you were too nice. And his response I thought was really interesting that he felt that there was something to that, that he wanted you to take ownership more of being the quarterback and that as your role there and the success of the team were one and the same. Do you think that that was a valid point of view? Do you remember having those kind of conversations and what did, if it true, what did you do differently as this season went on to kind of work on that? Yeah. I mean, uh, Coach Frost really wanted uh, me to, to step up as a vocal leader. Um, you know, that's something that we've kind of talked about for, you know, a few years now in regards to my leadership and how I can really use my voice as a as an influential tool. Um, you know, for the most part, it was me being more assertive, um, you know, expecting guys and, and letting them know what I was what I was seeing and making sure that, you know, we're all on the same page. Um you know, I really feel that I've come a long way in that sense. Um, for for me, I was, you know, very quiet and, and really just didn't really speak out as much. Um, so I really kind of got out of my shell these, really this last couple couple years. But really this, this year was um, different for me. And, you know, again, I'm, I can't thank those guys enough for really pushing me to do that. Jake Zivin in the back. Marcus, you just spoke of growing up wanting to go to the Heisman ceremony and thinking about winning it. Were you disappointed last year when it looked like for so much of the season that at least you'd be going there and then you didn't even get an invite? Not at all. Um, you know, those finalists last year deserved to be there. 
Um, you know, they've all had great seasons. For me, it was, um, you know, one of those deals that, you know, obviously people have their opinions and um, can't do much about it. You know, all I could really focus on was, was how I was playing and, and not worry about what other people think or, you know, the invitation process or anything like that. So it didn't bother me at all. I really just focused on my play and, and try to get better as a, as a football player. Molly Blue, center in the back. Hey, Marcus. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> all right. Uh, Oregon is pretty good at putting on Heisman campaigns and, and has a pretty good grasp of traditional media and social media. There hasn't been a campaign, per se, for you off the field. Did you have a voice in that decision? Was that part of something, the way that you wanted to handle it? Yeah, I, it was a collective effort. Um, you know, it was in regards to, you know, myself, my family, the coaches. Um, you know, it, it really wasn't just my decision. It was, you know, everyone kind of put a part into it. So, um, you know, it, for me, I really didn't want all that attention. Um, and I'm glad that, you know, they were able to kind of accept that and, and um Respect that decision. Non Heisman question for you, Marcus. Sounds um, good. <laughs> how have you seen Arizona's defense grow since the last time you played them? Yeah, um, you know they they have done an awesome job of you know not you know allowing teams to score points in the red zone. Um, you know they're you know they're they're three down guys have have done an awesome job of of kind of holding line of scrimmage and, and allowing their linebackers to make plays. Um, you know they got a I mean. A great group of linebackers that have, have really played well this year. Um, you know they're very aggressive, and you know they they cover well. So you know we're really gonna have to be prepared for this. Um, you know we've had a good couple of days, and um, you know we're looking forward to the challenge on Friday. Andrew, is there anything unique about this defense, the system, or the people who run it, like the Scooby Wrights of the world, the Tevises? Is there anything unique about them, or are they just really good at what they do? You said it best. They're really good at what they do. Um, they play very hard. Um, you know, they're a scrappy bunch that you know find finds ways to to turn the ball over and and um, you know get stops on defense. You know, they they really are just a stingy defense that, um, like you said, is really good at what they do. You spoke of kind of watching Matt Leiner growing up. I think you're tied with him with touchdowns, 99. Um, right? You may have passed him actually in the last game. Are there records that you've broken or set or milestones that even awe you? You don't seem like someone who really gets excited about those things, but is there one or two that you even thought, wow, that's pretty remarkable? Um, I mean, no disrespect, but no, I, I really, honestly, I haven't. Um, you know, a lot of these these records are, are you know, milestones. Um, I haven't really put much thought into it, and a lot of times you guys are the first ones to tell me that I broke it. So, um, no, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's, again, I can't say enough about the guys inside the locker room. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am without those guys. And, um, you know, I, I hope that, you know, each record that's broken, um, people realize that it, it was a collective effort, not just me. Marcus, how important has Byron been to the passing game? And what does it say about him as a player and a person to not only make the transition, but to do it so well and become such an impact at that spot? It's been pivotal. Um, you know, he, he's such a dynamic player. And... Um, for us, you know, in the position that he plays, it allows us to get him the ball in space. And, you know, with a guy like that who's very versatile um, in space, you know, it allows us to get a lot of, you know, chunks of yards and, and really score points. And uh, for him to, to make that transition um, says a lot about his, his character and, and what he feels about this team. And, um, you know, very, very team-oriented guy and, um, you know, really just kind of happy to see him have success. When you look back at your career a little bit, you know, there are some of those kind of pivotal games over the last couple of seasons, like, the, you know, the two Stanford ones or uh, maybe even the Arizona last year. Uh, with a, as much that is riding on this game Friday, when you guys look back at it, you know, how big is this third Arizona game for you guys? And just I, I know you're not a guy who kind of talks about like legacy or sentimentality, but just what's this one mean for you with as much writing on it um it would just mean that we we were able to accomplish you know our, our team goals that we set for ourselves this year and um all in all you know that's 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 what you want to accomplish and um you know even through a little adversity in the beginning of the year with that loss and now we have an opportunity to uh you know win the pac 12 and and to accomplish our goals um 
you know, it's going to mean a lot to us as a as a team. And I think uh, we're very focused. Um, you know, we're, we've prepared well, and you know, we're excited for this one. Jake Zivin. Marcus, you mentioned your pride for being a Polynesian football player, being from Hawaii. Does, do you have motivation to, to – would winning the Heisman mean more to you to be able to bring it back to the islands and be the first – I believe the first Hawaiian to win it, certainly the first Hawaiian quarterback to win that award? Yeah, I mean, it would <clears throat> – um, you know, that's a great question. Um, I think it it would hopefully open up doors for a lot of younger kids to see that – you know, a Polynesian kid can can have the opportunity to be a part of the conversations and and to be a part of the ceremonies and, um, you know, hopefully for me it it'll provide um, some motivation and and really uh, allow kids to see that they can take their opportunities and make the most.